and should you learn how to AI your own mares? This is what I want to explore in this video. And yes, I use the word explore because if all you want to know is whether it's possible, then yes. Other than some legal aspect that will depend on the jurisdiction in which you live, it's a little bit like driving a car. Anybody can do it. I've been doing it for 20 years and I know a lot of breeders that have also. If that's all you wanted to know, there you have it. But if you want a bit more detail as to what it takes and whether or not it's worth it, then stick around. Whether you're looking to simply inseminate your mare or you're looking at doing everything from ultrasounding to flushing for embryo, let's explore whether or not you can learn how to do this. And here are some questions for you to ponder. Do you have an interest in biology, physiology, and all the detail of the vet stuff? Because the more you're interested, the more you will learn, and the more you know, the better at it you will become. Are you comfortable with body fluid and excrement? Because honestly, some days you will be armpit deep in them. And so if you're a little bit squeamish or you're a bit of a neat freak, you're gonna have problem with this. Do you have one good arm and a strong grip? And are you generally pretty dexterous with that hand? Because you will need to be doing things without looking at your hands and you will be sometime holding uncomfortable position for a long time. If you're working on big mares, it would help if you have longer arm, but honestly, the average person can do it just fine. How good is your muscle memory? Because you're gonna rely on it quite a bit. Muscle memory is the ability to remember a physical position in space and be able to recreate it time after time. That can be quite useful. Do you have access to, and I can't emphasize this enough, do you have access to a supportive vet? Like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years and I still work very closely with mine. Do you have a patient and tolerant mare? Because when you're first learning this, it's almost essential to have one of those. How patient are you with yourself? Because believe me, at first it can be frustrating. There are days where you will wonder if you lost your mind and how can anybody do this? Frankly, I find myself there every beginning of breeding season where I have to relearn a little bit the physical memory and where everything are. And yeah, sometimes it can be quite frustrating. I have to remember to be patient with myself and know that I will get this. Finally, do you have help at home, uh, somebody to hold the mare or open doors or close doors or hold things for you? Sometimes having an extra pair of hand will be necessary. So if you're completely on your own and you have no help, this could be a little bit difficult. Is it worth it? Again, it will entirely depend on your situation, but there's certainly some costs that are involved in getting the training, the equipment and the material to be able to do that at home. And what you need to do is weigh how much does it cost to get the vet to do everything and how long it will take you to basically amortize the amount that you've spent in equipment, training and material. So for example, when I first got my, my first ultrasound machine it was $2,000 and at the time for the vet to come and do an ultrasound on the farm, it was roughly $100. So I knew that with 20 scan, the machine will have paid for itself. So if you had one mare, that means probably maybe two or three years of activity. In my case, I had three mares. So the ultrasound paid for itself in one season. Looking at it strictly from the perspective of practice, right? It takes a certain amount of time to get proficient at anything. So for example, if it takes you 10 insemination to get really good at it so that you're efficient and there's no problem, well, if you have one mare, that could mean two to three years of practice, right? Because you only get to inseminate your mare maybe two, maybe three times a year if things are not going your way. Same thing for ultrasound. It can take anywhere between 40 and 50 ultrasound on different mares to start to really be comfortable about finding the structure, using your machine, being good at it. So in that case, if you only have one mare, it could take many years for you to just build up that number of scans. On the other hand, if you have more than two or three mares, you're gonna get the hang pretty quickly. Personally, I found that it might have taken me 30 to 40 scans so to get to the point where I was really comfortable. And therefore, with three mares a year, that was good. But of course, like I mentioned before, every beginning of the new season, of a breeding season, I find myself again, step back a little bit and go, okay, all right, where are the structure? What am I looking at? How does the machine work again? So, but that's completely normal and to be expected. We only breed mares for a few times a year. In the US and in Canada, 
the majority of really serious small breeder are actually doing some of the breeding themselves. And the reason for that will vary depending on each of them. I hate trailering horses. Mare and foals, particularly, I find it dangerous, expensive, and nerve wracking. So if I can get away with not trailering horses, bonus. I also prefer for my mare to stay at home. I find that they're more settled, obviously, they're a lot quieter, and chances are it has an impact on their fertility. So if at all possible, if I can do everything and keep my mare nice and quiet and happy, I'm happy because when my mares are stressed, I'm stressed. There's no question that I had saved tons of money by doing it myself. And in fact, these days, if I didn't do most of the work myself, there's no way I could afford breeding horses. I love my vet, but it's not reasonable for them to drop everything because a mare needs to be bred or an ultrasound needs to be done because breeding can be unpredictable. Mares don't always read the book, as we say, and sometimes needs to happen fast. So just the flexibility of being able to do some of the work myself and not to depend on their availability is huge for me. I'm also incredibly vested in getting my mares pregnant, something that I found was not always the case when I was working with some outside vet over the years I have unfortunately worked with some vet that frankly I was just another number and I was sometime wondering if they were putting really the effort to get my mare pregnant with me in charge I know I'm putting all the effort that I can muster to get her pregnant the first time but probably the most important reason of them all is I like to do it. I like to be involved from the conception all the way to the birth of the foal. I like learning new things. I like applying them. I like doing the manipulation. So fundamentally, it's it's liking that scientific and medical or rather veterinary aspect of it that drives me to do it time and time again. So if like me, you're interested in the practical, the scientific, and sometimes the emotional side of breeding horses, well, you're in the right channel because that's pretty much all I talk about. So come along for the ride, hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about what it is that you actually need to breed your mares at home, go and see this next video and I'll take you through it.